Welcome to DIY Minded. Watch as I transform these logs into this beautiful edge grain walnut cutting board. These firewood logs have been hanging around my property for a couple years now. I couldn't decide what to do with them. I know I didn't want to burn them, but couldn't figure out just the right project. I finally decided it would be interesting to see how many things I could make with just these logs. I built this simple sled to square up the logs. It's just some scraps from the shop, a piece of plywood, a 2x4, and a thin strip to run in the groove. Unfortunately, from experience I can tell you, be careful you don't cut through your clamp. After squaring up all the logs, these are the cutoffs. I'm going to save these and set them aside for later. With my logs squared up, I go back to the bandsaw. I want to get the largest pieces I can out of these logs, so I start by ripping one inch strips. As you can see here, with these extreme cracks, it greatly affected how much usable lumber I was going to be able to get. I squared up all the boards, and again, I'm keeping all the scraps for future projects. I took what was left of each of the logs back to the bandsaw and ripped them into half inch strips. These are all the scraps that I have left from those original six logs. Stay tuned for future videos where I make as many projects as I can. I sent each of the one inch boards for a quick trip through the planer to true up the two faces. Then a few passes through the joiner to true up one edge. With all the severe cracking, I realized my best option was just to rip these one inch boards into thin strips and then glue them all up into the cutting board. After sorting out all the defects, you can see I wasn't left with enough material for a good sized cutting board. So I went back to those half inch strips I cut off the logs and cut a few additional pieces to fill in. I always use Tight Bond 3 when making cutting boards. If you're going to make one, make sure whatever glue you use is FDA approved for food contact. A great tip if you do a lot of gluing up of panels or cutting boards is to use a paint roller. I have been using the same 4 inch paint roller for several months now. After I'm done I remove it from the frame, wrap it tightly in plastic wrap, and save it for later. Unfortunately I have to glue them one at a time because my boards are different thicknesses. Man look at how fast that roller works. When gluing up a panel or a cutting board, if you have a few pieces that just won't align, put a little pressure on with a clamp and then lightly tap with a mallet. After removing the clamps and any large glue drips, it gets a few passes through the planer. You can see here I had to cut a couple of inches off each end just to be able to remove some of those smaller cracks. I wanted to add a simple detail to the edge. So I ran all four sides to the table saw at a 15 degree angle. If you need something to trace for a circle or a radius, look in your toolbox. Sockets come in all different sizes, giving you lots of options. I wanted my rounded corners to have that same 15 degree bevel that I got from my table saw. To do this, I set the table of my sander at 15 degrees and sanded to the mark I made earlier. Every surface gets a thorough sanding. I generally start at a 120 or 150 and work my way up eventually to a 320 on a project like this. Spend extra time and attention on the edges and the corners. Anybody can make a board, but it's really the details that make a project shine. When all sanding and saw marks are removed, I'll go back and sand every surface with 320 grit paper. Make sure you go with the grain to remove any swirls or scratches. I install feet on all the cutting boards that I make. The reason being, if someone were to wash the cutting board and lay it on a countertop to dry, it would be warped and ruined by morning. The feet allow air to flow all the way around it and dry evenly. It's always nerve wracking to drill into a nearly finished project, so mark your drill bit with a depth gauge so you don't go too far. If you're a woodworker, you are like any other artist out there, and you should find a way to sign your work. Here I'm using a brand that my wife got me on our second anniversary 18 years ago. I finish all my cutting boards with a simple food grade mineral oil. Here I'm pouring it on just so you can see that beautiful before and after. 
but normally I just dip them in a tub full of mineral oil. After dipping the board in the mineral oil, I set it up and give it a chance to absorb as much as it would like. After the board has absorbed as much of the mineral oil as it can, I squeegee off the excess, then rub it down with a paper towel. After attaching the four rubber feet, the only thing left is to sit back and enjoy the work. If you haven't already, please subscribe to DIY Minded and give this video a thumbs up.